Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Ruled Waves as the United States of America, episode number six. We've had a long stretch of peace. Um, we almost had war with France for a little bit there. Um, then tensions faded, now tensions are rising again, tensions with Russia are rising. We have an enormous amount of funds, and even though we built three... Um, by the way, I came back into this episode, uh, it's been just about a week since the last recording for me, so it's been a little while. So I watched the tail end of my last episode to get back into you know the flow of it, um, so we don't lose momentum between episodes. So just to build that back up for myself. And I looked at this Mount Rainier class and I was like, what the hell is this thing? And why did I build it? It's not that terrible because we don't have the four center lines, so this is really the best we could do, but it does give us a five-sided broadside, and I guess there's no point in using the two front wing turrets, because this is also a wing, right? Let me just look at... No, 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 this isn't. It only gives us... Uh, I need the firing lines. Let's open up the firing lines. We need that Mount Rainier. Can you just sort by... Date? Okay, well, it'll be here anyway. Okay, yeah, they do have, yeah, they both have very good firing arcs. Okay, you know what? Disregard. That is definitely the best choice. Better than putting two up in the front. Although, it doesn't look quite as nice. I don't really like the, I don't like asymmetry. I usually would sacrifice a little bit of inefficiency for symmetry. That's how much I, I like it. So, uh, okay, well, fair enough. It's good. It's, it's Obviously, it's not a bad ship. I would never design a bad ship, so it's, since I designed it, de facto, <laughs> it can't be a bad ship. But, you know, I mean, it would have been wonderful if we could have just gotten four turrets, we could have put the armor up more, if we had four sunline, which I imagine we'll get right now. No, but oil firing, that's also something you would definitely, 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 definitely like to have on a battle cruiser. So, okay, we can still sob weep quietly to ourselves that our battle cruisers were constructed about four months it seems i think they started 32 four months before oil firing that's a quite a blow obviously the engines on our dreadnoughts just don't require as much tonnage we don't reduce that much tonnage setting them to oil firing yeah there's even a case to be made i think keeping them coal firing because their engines won't get hit the coal bunkers are pretty thick so and kind of weird twist away. Anyway, with the release of our newest Dreadnought, we have a, a, another funny situation where we're going to have a high influx of money again. Now, the government hasn't decided to take any of it yet, but if there is anybody who needs to be refit in any way, we should be on that. Yeah, this, the von Steuben, the von Steuben, von, von Steuben. Anyway, this ship literally is obsolete the moment it's, <laughs> it comes into play. I mean, this is really, truly the case. Um, because oil firing has been researched now. So the Enterprise splashes into the water, has her warm-up period now. But before she even did so, we have oil firing, which she doesn't have. We have super firing turrets, which she doesn't have. Um, we have the caustic fire, which she doesn't have. And probably some other stuff that I, I'm not even thinking about. So just, to, this is truly the situation where your ships are obsolete by the time you even get to them, get them built. Okay, um, send a note. We could mobilize our ships. We have the money to do it. Let's do it. What in God's name is this naval secretary thinking? Torpedo boat destroyers are the most important part of the Navy. He wants you to build at least 21 additional destroyers. Well, you know what? He's not... I'm in line with this. Okay. Um, I don't... Where did our... Do we get any active ships at all? I guess it doesn't, that um, event we had with the French doesn't actually have an effect. 
and I don't even I don't even think it raised tensions. Let me take a look at my list of destroyer names because that was one of the reasons why we didn't build a destroyer, right? Uh, what the heck? Can I do it this way? Build ship. Do I have like a temp design in here somewhere? Let's just look by a year. No, just the one lonely destroyer down there. <laughs> My goodness. Can we sort by time and then do it? Does that work? Probably the wrong way. It should sort. Yeah, it does. Okay, so it does. This is one great thing about the game. I don't know if it does it intentionally or if it's just like literally an artifact. Um, a bug in the code almost. It's just something that he, uh, Frederick didn't plan, but it happens. But... It does sort by the second most recent sorted column as a second priority. So we sorted by year and then we sorted by type. So that means year is actually the second sorting factor among same types. That's really nice. Anyway, one destroyer, one destroyer to rule them all. I don't know which of our ships was a, I don't think, I think we didn't have a name for it. That was ultimately my problem. So let's all design a ship. Let's see what we can get. I mean, this can, this can be oil firing, for crying out loud. How much does that save? Let's leave it coal until we're pretty convinced we want... Ooh, this is... Actually, what is going on here? It is crowded. Let's remove this forward center line, because we have super firing anyway. And we always knew that the next ship for destroyers would be a torpedo ship. So let's go with something like... FG and then maybe something like this. A little bit crowded with the V and the whatever, so we'll get rid of V, I think. <clears throat> now this is only four torpedoes, which is not ideal, and we're way over our weight limit to boot. Probably we can get that down if we go to third. Okay, let's make this short range. So let's do speed. And now we have a little bit of room left. I think we could probably get rid of Q and add two other ones. Yeah, okay, so now we're talking. We have a five broadside. Let's delete this one and add the furthest one back, which, okay, is W anyway. <laughs> Let's delete these two then. Delete. Let's not use J. Let's use the one above that. Okay, that's, uh, that's better. So one rear, and this is three torpedo broadside with two extras on the other side. It's not a torpedo gunboat. It's pretty darn slow. How much does 31 cost us? Oh my gosh, with oil firing, we can get it. It's a darn good... I mean, this is a... Nah, I wouldn't say darn good, but it's a pretty decent destroyer. We can use the rest of our tonnage getting a little bit of uh, ammunition to the guns, which is good because they will be quality one four-inch guns. Very nice. So this is definitely a torpedo heavy ship. And I had a lot of nice names for destroyers. I have to say like one of these four, I was gonna, I'm, I'm picking basically for a class name just because um, I don't ask for, our supporters don't usually give class names for, uh, for destroyers. Although I'll have to go back and check and see if that actually was the case because maybe somebody did <laughs> ask for a destroyer. But anyway, um, Fairgoot, this is at, an actual destroyer class that the United States has. I also do like Sea Eagle and Van Buren. These are both these are three fantastic names for a class. I mean, this could be any three of these could be a real destroyer class in the United States Navy. So I actually don't remember who submitted any of these. Um, I think Sir Aquila submitted Sea Eagle, and it was one word, but I'm going to make it two because I think that that's the way they would do it in the Navy. Fairgoot just sounds so good. Let's just do the Fairgoot. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize, especially because if this is a, an actual Navy <laughs> ship class. So we'll go with the Fairgoot. Short range, yeah, we know. But we're gonna be okay with that because it gives us one extra knot, and 31 knots is not still not that amazing. Unfortunately, these will be a little bit more expensive to maintain but let's go ahead and do it. And we'll probably get a whole bunch of torpedo technology now that we've done this. So let's just do one for now because I can actually name 
each individual one as they come out. So we got the Fairgoot, we got the Sea Eagle, we have the uh, Devon, and we have the Van Buren. Fantastic. These are some ships which I suspect will see action. We'll build a whole bunch more. I think we can afford it. These are pretty cheap and okay, the maintenance is 17,000. I think we can afford that. In fact, because I'm seeing that we have a lot of money, let's go ahead and take some of that money away by building a lot of fair grid classes. And this is usually the optimal way of playing. Just build a ton of one class. Just reach some max min point. I mean, we didn't get to a min max plateau. We didn't get some great technology for destroyers like double torpedo launchers or, you know, a higher torpedo time. I mean, a loud time for destroyers. We are only building at 700, but that's still a decent ship. So, um, we'll sell to the Japanese just because they're probably so far behind it doesn't matter. Okay. And tensions with France are not going up. Suicidal has finished her reconstruction. Um, make a national hero, sure. Okay, we are able to spot the illustrious, which is only using 12 inch guns. Low armor, 21 knots, okay. Better ASW, that's fine. Actually, the only thing we, I really want is better guns. French tensions have dropped. Russia now has oil, boon times, we will, let's build railroads to increase the long-term prosperity of the nation. I think that's just absolutely the best. We could strengthen the nation, but Navy, but, and actually if anybody knows about this, probably there's a way to look at the event in the, in the code, the game code. Oh God, we need 21 destroyers. I almost forgot. So <laughs> that's the whole reason why I got that. Hello. But, um, I'll go build a ton more in a second. Um, I think this might impact your like raw unseen economy score. So I'm going to do that. And now let's go ahead and build. God, wow, they really want us to build some destroyers. Well, like it or not, we're entering the destroyer age. So how many is this? Probably nine. Okay, good. That's fine. Um, technology sharing agreement with Great Britain. Wow. The rich get richer. We'll do it because it's really going to help us. And although it'll make Great Britain better too. Yay, I'm being praised. Hooray. Um, let's send a battleship. Oh my god, people don't like battleships. Our research efforts in fleet tactics. Very good. We have better torpedoes. So, I think it's time to mobilize. Let's go ahead and get everyone to active fleet. Active, just everyone to active. And you know what? Before I forget, these are 1904, it's 1908. We will rebuild all of these at the same time. They shouldn't take long. Hopefully they'll be back just in time for wars. Uh, the beginning of the war, it's tensions already at that point, but it should be like, okay, it's, what, three months? We need to wait three months. Even if not, uh, even if it's less than that, we can, well, <laughs> I guess we're just going to suffer. Hey, okay, the French Friedland. 11-inch guns. Maybe we shouldn't feel too bad about our von Steuben. It's definitely going to be superior to these ships. I forgot what its armor is, but at least armament-wise, it's much better. 14 6 inch guns, triple turrets, holy cow, wow, that is, that is big, and a shirt of 900 tons, fair good, <laughs> it happened, this game, I mean this time it's, it's actually more striking this uh, career than normal, that we keep getting the technology we need for the ship we just designed, only after we build them. It's really happening quite a lot, I'm surprised. <laughs> but that's okay, this is the absolutely the best time for it to happen because 
uh, we're playing as the United States and this is kind of easy mode. So we have a nice negative monthly balance. Um, can't, cannot even afford to build a new ship even though now we have plenty of reasons to do so. The only thing we're missing is four centerline turrets and then we can get a true dreadnought on the waves. Actually four, we're missing the four centerline and probably 14 or 15 inch guns. I would prefer 14 I think I think after analysis, 14 inch guns are actually quite good. Our top spot, or maybe it was 15 inch guns is the last one that's the higher firing rate. Yeah, four, I think 15 is good. Maybe, I ah, can't remember exactly. I did some analysis. I think damage wise, they just scale um, by their size. There's no like weird scaling, so. It just comes down to penetration, stats, and, well, for me, damage per rate of fire. Okay, the freedom, we already saw this one. Spies, machinery, better damage control, Russia. Okay, just, wow, we're, duh! Okay, and we, and by the way, we really need those ships back. They're back in a month. Fantastic. You don't need to set things on foreign stations for the first month anyway, I believe. So let's go ahead and build a few more minesweepers because we do want to control the enemy's access to submarines and all that, which by the way is another thing I can build pretty soon. Let's build the 1908, not that it matters, but just so I don't have to refit two different designs. We'll just get 10. We're already kind of hurting for money, so get 10 more. I mean, it's just crazy that as the United States, you can just buy 10 more ships at a whim. Now let's also start getting some of our we don't have any short range ships, right? Let's start getting some of our battleships out to Southeast Asia. I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the Florida and the Georgia since they, eh, they can, they should, kinda should move together, right? And I'm gonna be very bold about this. Let's move four of our battleships over there. I'm assuming that these things can still go toe to toe with, um, with any uh, dreadnoughts, which shouldn't be like full dreadnoughts. They're kind of like semi dreadnoughts. I mean, okay, there are dreadnoughts, but they shouldn't have that many guns. So it, it should be like four against three. I mean, sorry, four against six gun wise. That's what the situation would be if my own battleships were fighting my own dreadnoughts. And I, I'm assuming it's gonna be something like that uh, for our, everyone else. Where else do we wanna put ships? Well, let's see, probably some more ships. Oh, we need some light cruisers probably. I didn't get the new light cruiser design yet. It'll, I think it's gonna have to wait. Cause now that we have triple turrets, that's something I really want to take advantage of. And we'll probably have to move a few ships into, actually let's move the dreadnoughts into the Caribbean. But let's just wait until war happens first. Our new ship. It's found the, e the ship easily surpassed her design speed. Amazing. And good timing that we're just about to go to war and these are all being commissioned. Now, because they are short range, I'm going to put a halt to their workup schedule. Uh, that's a lot of clicking. Let's go to the enter. Okay, well, fine. Just as I was moving my hand over to enter. Uh, rate of fire. Wow. I mean, we're all set. So I think we're going to cut short the workup period for some of these ships just so we can get them where we want them to go. I don't know what happens if they're short range and they're being told to move somewhere when war breaks out because you can't move short range ships during war. I'm just going to hope that these can get there <laughs> before war begins. Likely not, but it's only four. Even if we lose them, who cares? And then we're also going to move a couple to the Caribbean. Okay, good. And then they'll have to just work up basically when they get there. And you know what, we'll send two more even because any new ships that are coming in are going to come into the East Coast. And then we also ought to get maybe a couple of ships over to the West Coast. It's still not 1914. Somebody advised me the Panama Canal was built not in 1912. As I, as I said a few times, it was 1914. So it's not 1914 yet. They'll have to go all the way around, but let's get a few ships in. What is this? Oh, the sandwich class is old. Well, you don't say. We'll just upgrade her as is. Yeah. It's fine. Get her back, and we'll probably go to war next turn. 
Okay, in Japan. Um, we should content con bleh. condemn this. I think so. Disarmament conference. Do I have any big ships building? That's interesting. I don't. What am I talking about? I do. <laughs> I have all my battle cruisers building. I thought I wouldn't mind losing them, but I mean, I've, at this point, it's too much invested. Let's choose the top option. Okay, we helped out Great Britain a little bit. That's all right. They've helped us a bit. We expected this. Let me just take a look at what was I trying? To, oh yeah, when are my ships due to be built? We already spent about 14 months per ship, uh, so it's 14 times. Let's just call it 10 times four, about 40 million per ship, 120 million total. Basically, a battle cruiser itself being just sunk. Not ideal. Maybe they're waiting for me to actually get my ships to where I want. Oh, okay. Well, there it goes. Convoy defense in Guam. I only have... Oh, my ships aren't there yet. Do I want to defend with one armored cruiser against battleships like... Yeah, you know what? I do. Call me crazy, but... I believe in the Benedict Arnold. It should have been one of the winners of the shooting competitions anyway, so... Okay, um... Let's get our... Overlay stuff up. Let me take a drink of water. There it is. Ah, squad max. What are we up against? If we're not up against a battleship, we're okay. If we're up against battleship, we're, well, maybe not okay. I think this thing's too maneuverable. Okay, that might be, no, an escort. So this is an armored cruiser then? Chase her down. Yeah, it's a light cruiser. She might be running for help from her battleship. This is definitely possible. But let's go ahead and... What, what was that? A few hits? Okay, so we have a True Day class, which is only 5-inch guns. Yeah. So this is one of those where you feel a little bit bad for your opponent. You can try to stay out of the line of fire for those uh, destroyer for obvious reasons. One of the things which certainly could do us in is a torpedo. What's our torpedo range? Okay, wow. So we don't have to worry about it at this range. That's good to know. Hunt them down, hunt them down. Firing a full broadside. Not hitting too many times though. Let's close in and then we'll have to use our rear guns because I imagine we'll fire our our four guns all the way out, completely completely out of ammunition. We did hit this other destroyer quite a few times, so I saw a couple hits against us, but did not even penetrate. They did have one superstructure hit which penetrated, but now things are starting to go really downhill. We got lots of many, many, many minutes where we were just clobbering her kind of want to get this destroyer too. So how greedy will we be? I think we'll go greedy. Hopefully this destroyer tries to double back and save its friend. It could. Okay, straight north. I think this is uh, this is the one that's going to get away, I think. Oh, we got a few hits. Up, oh, that's it. We did it. Okay, very good. Light damage from one hit. My goodness. Okay, but well, anyways, this is a great start to the war. We're at war with France again. <laughs> forever enemies. Instead of friends forever. <laughs> um, what's going to happen with our <laughs> ships, though? They did not make it. But we'll see. Maybe they'll get there on their own. Let's move our... Dreadnoughts, like maintenance is already going to be higher anyway, so now it doesn't matter as much if you go to the Caribbean, which is where we want you, definitely, definitely. 
Um, we'll move an armored cruiser down there as well. We have plenty of armored cruisers. No sense in having them all sit here. In fact, maybe we'll send a few to raid as well. Let's send two over to Northern Europe just to kind of muck around over there. We'll set them to raid when they get there. And then send two to the Caribbean as well because I don't think that there'll be much action on the East Coast. And ideally, I would send another one to the West Coast just to stop anything from happening there. I think I will. We can afford to spread them around and then we'll be keeping three. Now let's send the Manila Bay over to Southeast Asia. That seems just too appropriate to pass up. Okay. All right, so we still have four battleships in the East Coast. Make that five. Certainly that's more than yeah, that's definitely going to be more than they're going to be able to bring. They're not going to be able to do invasions there. But it, maybe it's a waste because what kind of invasions can we do? None. Oh, we can't do anything in the Caribbean now. I forgot. <laughs> okay, well, we should be moving everyone over to Southeast Asia then. This is really where we want to push things. So you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to move my dreadnoughts to Southeast Asia. So we'll get them there, and then I'll move to... Let's just say two battleships to the Caribbean. I'm still hopeful that the French will position some ships there. Let's just see where they're actually positioning ships. One destroyer here. They have a armored cruiser there. Um, nothing there, really. Nothing. Where are their forces? Maybe just all in the Mediterranean? Well, it must be the first month because I forgot I have not even put my minesweepers on coastal patrol. So we'll have to see where they send their ships after this month. Okay. Torpedoes. Okay, we sank two sh they sank two ships and then we sank two submarines. Coastal raid. Interesting. Our battleships have arrived. I will accept. Okay. And blockade of enemy. What? <laughs> My two armored cruisers? Surely this is some misunderstanding. Oh, oh, my my, my dreadnoughts are there. <laughs> yeah, my dreadnoughts are trying to move to through the Suez Canal to Southeast Asia. So we've actually blockaded Northern Europe. Well, maybe this is my strategy then. What if I don't move them? Ah, they, it's got a star already. Speaking of what to do with my money, I think that's another thing I want to do is make sure I have enough. How is our uh, sit ship situation looking in Southeast Asia? 82 out of 124. I think we're okay, but let's just take one of our bigger ones, base capacity 100. It's pretty big. 20. Yeah, let's take our 100 and improve this base. Just so we have a little bit of extra storage there. If we're going to do this, I mean, assuming that we can't take more colonies, that might not be strictly necessary. I mean, if we had gotten a nom, this is one thing I should have factored into which colony to take last time. I should have taken a nom if the base capacity is better, but I did not know that. So live and learn. The little things I'm still learning <laughs> after eight full series in this game, uh, which is only the ones I've done on camera for the channel, but I've done other, you know, plenty. I mean, actually it's more than eight because I've done a couple streams and uh, plenty of campaigns. I'm an old sea dog when it comes to rule the waves. But even, uh, even what is it, can't teach uh, an old dog new tricks. I'm hoping that this old dog can still learn a few lessons. So, all our destroyers are finishing up. I didn't see, by the way, okay, convoy attack. Six armored cruisers. No, I don't want to do that. What the devil? Okay, very strange. We'll do it. I don't understand why our people aren't going through the Suez Canal, but I guess it doesn't matter. It's equal. Let's just hope that this is a battle we can win if we're up against any Hopefully we're up against an armored cruiser though to make it a fair fight, but they're running away. Those look like, yeah, okay, so probably not. Yeah, 
Yeah, just close, start swatting them down. Close with any of the destroyers if you can. Oh god, it's not good weather conditions. Let's sink our ships and get out of here. We know what these are, those. Those are destroyers. So we can kind of circle... I mean, torpedo range is really small. I think our torpedo technology, if anything, is better than the French. Okay, we sank one destroyer already. That's quick. She's going to launch, so we will turn. Good. Hopefully she launched her torpedoes already. We'll dive into the thick of it here then. Don't want to run into a ship. Hold fire. <laughs> Uncertain enemy. Well, I mean, kind of you'd think that <laughs> ship going through this would know everything is going to be an enemy. One of our turrets jammed, which explains the little red. Okay, we just decimated their forces already. Not a surprise. There's the destroyer. If we can close on her, we definitely want to shoot that. Come on. Do I have to do it? I can actually, since it's um, captain's mode, I can force her manual targeting, and then she will ignore all of her other wishes and desires, and she'll only shoot at the target I want. So we can see that's happening here. We're avoiding torpedoes. Okay. Apparently we got a little bit too close. <laughs> And visibility and torpedo range are identical, which is problematic. <laughs> okay, it got suddenly a little bit better, but let's just hunt down the last ships. I think that they're all dead. Except for this one. We missed one. Okay, there it is. So this is still a success. We took out one destroyer. I mean, I would prefer to take out more destroyers. Because this does remove them from the map. I mean, this is strategic, right? Play our cards for the long game, which means take out destroyers now. Don't have to deal with destroyers later. If they're out of escorts, then um, the AI will decline their fights. And you'll just win based on getting points every, every month. Or maybe we'll just end up blockading them again. But okay, this is, uh, this is over. So let's get on out of here. cruise away it's in style all right so sank one did not sink the other one unfortunately but mission accomplished anyway a trivial fight we haven't have we had like a real fight hmm okay what happened with these destroyers <laughs> they're stuck in the mediterranean I mean, there's no place you can go anyway. The Caribbean? You can get to the Caribbean. I don't think they can move because, yeah, I've probably been getting messages about it. Have I? No, I haven't. But anyways, you can't move ships during peace. I mean, uh, during war, short range ships during war, which is going to be very problematic. Okay, let's get you back. Just move back to the East Coast. And why don't you just start raiding? Very good. Okay, that's Anam is being invaded again. This is a uh, familiar territory for our Marines. They were there just four or five years ago. Lots of technology breakthroughs. Great Britain has stolen technology and turrets and gun mountings from us, which seems unusual considering we're in a technology sharing agreement, but um, let's send a diplomatic note. Actually, I don't, uh, okay, let's do that. We sank three ships, fantastic. Okay, now what does it say? Did it talk about, yeah, there it is. Short range ships cannot make a strategic move during wartime. Can, uh, you know, this is, uh, in an act of desperation, I'm gonna put them on foreign station and see if they move on their own. This is 
me trying to game the system, but yeah. I mean, they're, they're just going to sink. They're going to be scuttled or whatever. So it's just stupid. Anything I can do to get them out of that. It's one of those things I wouldn't mind even save game editing because it's, it's something weird, obviously. It's a, it's a game rule, which I understand, but if your short range ships are moving when you go to war, they shouldn't just stop moving. <laughs> it's, it doesn't make sense, right? So, ah, it's really nice that you can have, I can have such a nice positive outlook even on things which aren't going our way though, because the series, I mean, this is the United States, so <laughs> things just work out well no matter what. We have plenty of money too. We haven't gotten the four, four center lines, which is the only thing I would say keeping us from building a new class. By the way, we have tons of ship capacity everywhere but Southeast Asia, yeah. Well, that's not good. Okay, I think that's what happens when the French, when the people you're at war with lay down a ship. Only the Navy can win this war. Although, honestly, let's try it. I mean, it's the one time we're going to have the money to do it. Okay, cruiser action, battle in support of land combat. 37 minutes into this video, well, okay. A cruiser action where we only have destroyers and we can't avoid it. Well, these ships are doomed to die anyway, right? So let's go out guns blazing. This should be a short fight anyway. And hey, we're in captain's mode, so we do have control of our ships. 32 knots because they're surpassing their design metrics. This is gonna be a hell of a fight. <laughs> Damn the guns. Arm the torpedoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a game of chicken. We're not going to blink first. Oh, my gosh. Which way is she going to turn, though? She's got to turn left. Okay, turn. All right, just keep going. Okay. One more, and I think we'll have her. Critical hit to the conning tower. Cover your ears. I have no idea how long, how high this is going to be. Launch torpedoes. No solution. Okay. Then we want to go one turn, I think. Oh, did we hit it? Oh, it's so close. Yes, the Hopkins detached. Very good. Perry sinking. We're going down in a blaze of glory. Okay, Hopkins, this is your chance. Fire torpedoes. Okay, now stay with her. Stay with her. And launch again. The one I wanted is now destroyed, I think. No, Hopkins, what are you doing? Just, why are you not allowed to turn in? <laughs> Do you see this wiggling? Okay, well, that that's a little disappointing. We had some wiggle issues there. Again, I'm not going to try to be too upset, even though I think I could have turned and launched if the game wasn't having this weird bug or whatever it is that's okay okay we have a low chance to hit on this let's fire anyways we have three more torpedoes so if we can get lucky that'd be great she's launching two more torpedoes and you know what we're launching the last one too you know that right launch them fire them all fire everything and then the AI and her prescient ability to know when I'm launching torpedoes has turned away perfectly in time. A little bit unfortunate to that, but uh, okay, we'll take our beating on this one. We don't, we still have one torpedo left, but I think that one is going to be stuck in the tube. Starboard broadside. Yeah, it's the wrong side, but I think that that's the one that's destroyed. Yeah, okay. So we'll wait for this to end. 
that little wiggle thing when the two ships get too close, I, I don't know why. It allows you to ram ships, for crying out loud, but... So, I don't know what happens when the AI's jiggling around like that. When the... I'm sorry, the ship, I mean, is jiggling around like that. Well, it's perfect timing, though, because <laughs> I needed to keep that short in order to end this episode in a reasonable amount of time. So, we'll call this video to a close here. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, um, I just released a video on Battletech. It's just a, a gameplay overview, but I've been having a lot of fun with that one. If you're not sure if you're going to like it or not, in fact, this is specifically for Alexius. I know you're out there. Um, or anybody else who hasn't played Battletech but is interested in kind of maybe looking into it, I recommend it. And uh, feel free to check out my video on that. Otherwise, thanks for watching this video, and we'll be back for episode 7 soon. This was a little delayed because, actually, <laughs> the fault is of the Battletech video. So uh, I try, I'm trying to get out two a week, but this is basically almost like a week after the last one. So anyway, um, we'll get the next one out sooner. So thanks for watching, and until the next episode, take care.